Good morning. My name is Natalia Gedemashka, and I'm very happy to be here. So I'll start with thanking the Center for Instructional Development <laughs> and Karen and Susie for inviting me to, to talk to you today. And I do thank you for coming because Vygotsky is such an exotic person for you. You know, he's from dark, deep Russia. So <laughs> <laughs> and it's always a pleasure for me to talk about Vygotsky in uh, like wonderful places like Vancouver Community College. I do see some of my former students in the room. <laughs> and as I told you already, you know all my jokes, so I'm in big trouble. I have to invent the new jokes <laughs> on the go. But it's 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 a pleasure to see you here as a professional, and I hope tonight, tonight, today, no, I won't keep you by tonight. Um, we will have a little bit of conversation about how Vygotsky theory influenced the classroom teaching. And as I told Susie, she knows I can talk about Vygotsky for hours at the time, so I will probably have a hard time timing myself. I'm planning to do about 40, 45 minutes presentation. And I would really like to have questions and answers um, session afterwards, because it's much easier for me to be relevant to what you have in mind if I have some questions from the audience. Let's see how it goes. And if you don't have questions, I can continue talking about Vygotsky. A little bit about myself. I'm a vice president of the Vygotsky International Association. I promise to. <laughs> Uh, the Vice President um, of the Gatsky Association. It's an international organization with a headquarters in Moscow, Russia. I graduated from Moscow University and I moved to Vancouver 10 years ago. I'm a f uh, senior lecturer at the Faculty of Education at Simon Fraser University. And I also belong to the group, Vygotsky oriented group at the American Educational Research Association. It's called Cultural Historical Activity Theory Group. And the abbreviation of it is very nice. It's called CHAT Group. C H A T. Uh, Vygotsky is very um, influential in North America, but it's just a recent development. I'd like people not to feel bad if you never heard about him because his um, influence in, in North American education happening on my watch. When I first arrived in North America in 1993, I was at the time faculty of University of Connecticut in States. Um, nobody heard about Vygotsky too much. And the reason for it is not because people didn't want to, but because his life itself in, back in Russia, too, was quite tragic. And his scientific legacy has a lot of uh, tragic events. He, he was born into the Tsarist Russia before the revolution. Uh, he embraced the social, uh, Great October Social Revolution, we call it, in 1917. For the only reason, he was able to move out of pale, the Tsarist Russia has a huge discrimination for Jewish people, and the pale was the circle um, which uh, the policy created that people from Jewish community were not allowed to live or work in Moscow, St. Petersburg, Kiev, or any other cultural center. So he was born in Belarus, therefore, uh, just outside of pale. And when the uh, Great October Social Revolution came, he was uh, feeling uh, very happy about it because now he could go to Moscow, and he, he, that's actually what he did. He went to Moscow, studied there, and uh, eventually become a very famous psychologist in Russia. Um, however, because of the guy named Stalin, you heard about Stalin? Mm -hmm. Uh, the life of Vygotsky is quite tragic. He actually himself died at the age 37 uh, because he was sick of tuberculosis. So he was a genius who died way too early, that's what we think. And, um, but, you know, in Russia is such an interesting country. If you live beyond age 37, forget about calling yourself a genius. Well, 37 is such a strange age. It's, I know it's historical coincidence, but our poets like Pushkin, was killed in duel at age 37. Uh, another poet committed suicide at the age 37. So Vygotsky is, was here in this realm of being geniuses who died too early in, in a tragical um, disease. However, would he not died, we all think that he would be probably killed in a concentration Stalinist camp. 
And the reason we think so because his work was forbidden in Russia. His books were taken from libraries. They were pretty much, you know, put into fire. And the only way his legacy was preserved was through the oral history. His family, his his wife, his daughter, who were trying to preserve his archive, risking their lives. And I, I do like to talk about that because it's not immediately clear for people why the the works of Vygotsky were not very famous in, in North America, for example. It's just because they were forbidden in Russia as well. When I was a student in Moscow University, you may think I'm old, but I'm not that old. So, <laughs> And it was in in 1980s. We still had, had in Russia the portrait. I walk into the Moscow University walls, and here's a portrait of the man. And you know how they usually write the names underneath? Whose portrait is it? His name was not there. You got to ask. He was still forbidden. His books were forbidden. So you got to ask, who is this guy? And why is that in Faculty of Psychology of Moscow University? His portrait is there, but there is no name attached to it. So just to give you a little bit of flair, this is this trench Russian thingy. <laughs> Uh, the, the other reason I really like to talk about uh, the Vygotsky and his life too, uh, and this year is a special year for me, unfortunately tragic year. I'm a, a friend, I, I was a friend of Vygotsky's daughter Gita. Unfortunately, tragically, she died this past June in Moscow. So it's, it's a great loss for me personally as a friend, but it's also a great loss for the Gatskin community in the world because Gita uh, was uh, a person who knew him alive. She's the last one who knew him alive. She traveled the world. She was uh, lecturing by her father and um, bringing all kind of wonderful memories and anecdotes about his life to us. Uh, she also was a, a kind of re reservoir of wisdom for us. And just one moment, uh, one uh, episode I'll tell you why it was so important and why we're still grieving that Gita is not with us. Um, it was an article published in North America somewhere in the beginning of 90s in which uh, um, the author claimed that John Dewey, you know John Dewey, is, uh, people who are in education know John Dewey, is a great American philosopher and educator, uh, uh, had traveled to Russia in the beginning of 20th century. So the author claims that Vygotsky theory must have been just a copycat of Dewey theory because such a great guy like Dewey was very, and he is very influential in North America. And there was an article published was full of his assumptions. Um, I, I was rather surprised by the article because all my life I thought that Vygotsky created his theory. He's a genius, quite unique understanding of education and what's happening in education. So here's this assertion that Dewey traveled to Moscow, Vygotsky learned from Dewey, so there's nothing new in Vygotsky theory, but what Dewey taught him. So I called Gita. And Gita said, well, Natalia, Vygotsky was a prolific writer. He also uh, really liked to keep his diaries. It's an old Russian intelligentsia style to keep the diaries about the events. So she said, okay, let me look it up in his archive for the time frame when Dewey traveled to Russia. And she didn't find anything about the meeting or any mentioning or any any um, information about due visit. So just to show you, it, it was so easy for me, unfortunately, in, in this all in past, just to call up Gita and said, look, this guy published the article, a very prestigious North American journal. Is that true? And she would be the only one who actually holds the end of the story. She would say, no, it's very unlikely because I don't see any... Uh, recollection in his diaries. So unfortunately Gita died and we only can preserve her memory and Vygotsky memory by talking about Vygotsky and hoping that message is still um, interesting for current North American education. <laughs>